Toy Tractor Times is at the 2019 National Farm Toy Show in Dyersville, Iowa. I'm with Tyson Shores of Newcastle, Oklahoma. Tyson, congratulations, you're holding the big trophy. You won in the senior 164 scale division, and that is a very competitive area to be in the show. And uh, taking the gold 2255 from the toy farmer yep. is big congratulations to you. Thank you. So let's um, take a look at your display and see all the good details you put into it. All right, let's get to it. So Tyson, you're from Oklahoma and yep. you have an Oklahoma display here. Um, what have you brought out to share with the people hey, in here in Iowa? It's something that you'd see out in Oklahoma. They uh, run about 150 head of cattle out here on the ranch and uh, right now they're bringing in some more cattle from a different pasture that they got. All right, so that's the... Uh, truck here yeah got the brush guard and Tony Dixon made the truck the brush guards and bumpers and everything got some of my designs on what the model shakers. truck is that that would be a 2000 Chevy uh, diesel Duramax okay Dually 3500 whatever we got, got another cattle one. here yeah got, I think there's 10 head in that black baldy is what the farm would raise okay and then we've got some of those out here in the pasture yeah so big bull right there you know we've got a few of the calves right now the other ones will probably be laid off somewhere where their mama put them laid off hiding still and i like your detail where you know we have the driveway looping around here where the trucks come in and then kind of more of a trail or a path right. coming yeah. across the field we try to keep as much well i'd say that out in the pasture we try to keep as much grass out there but that's just where the trucks ran over and like right there where the gate is there's a little bit of gravel that spread over and that's just from using oh, it every that's a day good detail. or whatever and I, I like how you have the high traffic patterns from the cattle here the, right i guess this would be a corral or the cattle chute yeah they'd run the cattle in this way through this gate okay. they'd close that one closed and then they panel put more panels across all the way up to there that way, if they have a cow get down or whatever that they have to revaccinate, the gate right here would open and it swing back into the catch pen. But the cattle, in theory, they like to run in a circular motion. So that panel up there, that would open and make pretty close to an alley. So they run in here and make it into a motion and then come okay. out. The yeah, bell, bell rings out there right now, um, just cause they needed a little bit of extra feed on them. They just got them bailing the wheat field out back and so they needed a little bit of extra feed for them. And I just want to show how you sculpted the terrain that it's not just a flat border. Right, it, it actually is. flows down and you've got the edge here right. where it drops off to another level. And That's something that you really see out in Oklahoma is some washout in the pastures or whatever. So you've got a, a trough here. Yeah, 3D printed uh, water trough. I tried to get it a dirtier water, murkier. It looks like I see a little like slide crust there on the top. That yeah. looks good. That's uh, something that you typically see out in summer. Now, what's this uh, piece here on the? That's a mineral tub. So they okay. stick either their mineral blocks, protein blocks, and their salt blocks. Okay. They'd stick that in there, and the cows would lift that rubber lid up and lick on it. And then you've got a tree that has recently been uh, cut back here. Yeah, the idea would be the tree got a little too big and started dying and they still need a little bit of shade because it's got a little bit of growth left in it mm -hmm. and so they chopped off all the dead limbs and brought them down here to the burn pile and they'd burn that off probably when the grass gets dead probably winter time when there's snow on the ground or okay. on a rainy day that way it doesn't like sure. a little pasture on fire so we moved from their cattle up to a house here it looks like you've got a fire pit in the backyard and that's a wellhead so oh well okay out in oklahoma that's probably something you'd see just something holding or cinder block holding a ply, piece of plywood down or something okay you got oh. the mom and kid out there sitting on the rocking chair watching you got, the you got a hose down here too yeah i got a water faucet and a hose for the uh, garden and that, where did where did your house come from it's a kid off of ebay that okay. all you gotta do is just assemble it together uh pretty that's simple nice. kit you got the the mailbox other, yeah that's one of my 3d prints too on the other side of the house is where the flower bed is. Jason probably can come around here and zoom in on it. We'll walk over here and see all the landscaping. So there's a wheelbarrow 
in the flower bed holding some plants or whatever. As we move into the shop, the shop is all built out of styrene and everything. We've got all the shop details in there that you would need. On this little L-shaped table right here, you got chop saw and grinder and a welding helmet, bench grinder and a welder. So that would be more of the fabricating table. Okay. And uh, the table over on the far right by the front door, that would be just your workbench table. That's why it's got the vise and the chair right there. Uh, got a few toolboxes in there. One of them's open with all the wrenches and everything showing. That's got nice. a shelf with just miscellaneous junk on there. I'll come along here to show the other side. You've got the yeah, MoCo that, in there. Yeah, I got the John Deere MoCo in there hooked to the 4440. Um, 4440 probably would have had the hub go out on it. And while it's in the shop, might as well get an oil change. So about that time of year, ready for an oil change again. I was so I'm doing some work there and then is that a 7800 on the baler? Uh yes, that's a 7810 actually okay. on the baler. Actually, I think and I see so you got the side panel open on it. That's pretty Yeah, neat. that's one of my 3D prints on there. If Jason swings around this way, you can see all the gears and pulleys and belts and everything. That might be worth lifting out there. Do you mind lifting it up? Yeah, I'll bring it out here. Got hoses and uh, PTO shaft on it. Looks good. John Deere 569. Just your typical baler that you'd buy from John Deere. Uh, it didn't do much besides the door and the few of the detail pieces to it. And now is this um like I, I, I'm always get tripped up on this. Does it look like a cake house or a storage? So they call them the cake, cake bins. Cake bins. Okay. Overhead cake bin. So what you do is cake. It's like a pebble. So it's about like a three eighths cylinder by half inch long, that would be what you call creek feed. Okay. And typically creek feed, it's got all kinds of minerals and all that, 14% protein, 14% creek feed is what we feed there at the house. And you bring, an auger truck would come in, so that, I think that would be about a, oh, I don't know how many ton that bin would hold, but normally we bring in 10 or 12 ton of, uh, creek feed and we'd auger it up into the very top and then you feed it out into your cake bin on the back of your truck okay and that little red flap that would fold open and that would you drive right beside your trough push a button inside your cab and that's how you feed out uh, on this truck got one of my bumpers again on it it's got feed bags and T post got a barbed wire spool. T post got driver. It's ready to go. Got the hay bale. Yep, that would be the feed truck. That would be one of the uh, this year's bales. So the front axle broke off when I was showing somebody earlier today. <laughs> that is always the risk of bringing it out to the show. Is something right. that's going to get. That's what stinks about yeah, customizing. <laughs> um, this little tan trailer out here. That's a custom piece that I did together. It, I took two top shelf replica bumper pull trailers and I cut them together and uh, made that into, I think it's an 18 foot gooseneck. Little Lincoln welder sitting next to it. And then just a typical, typical trailer. Yeah, typical flatbed. So you've got uh, another 7,000 series of letters. That was 7,800. Okay. Year. Yeah. And we've got the that one, uh, wheel got rake here. And, yep. Uh, 6410 or 6410. It's got cut down ROPs on it, so it looks like it's folded over. Three point hitch on it. Got Chucky's nice. wheels and tires. And then uh, what model grain drills in there? That's a Great Plains. I think it's a 4S. No, it's a 3S 3000 HD. Okay. Mouthful. 30 foot model. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, yeah, it's 30. They are. I, I see those. I just did an ADC. 2325 Great Plains air drill for big tractor power. That's, right. You're like, is that right? <laughs> yeah. So we got the bail wagon too. Caleb Stone built the bail wagon. Okay. That's a sweet piece. I think that's probably one of my favorite pieces on there. And then as we move further back to the display, that's something you see out in Oklahoma. Oil setting over there. Now let's take a look at that. So we have our oil well here. 
we call those pump jacks out from where we're okay. from. So what they'll do is they'll set up a big drill before they put that in, and they'll drill so many hundred feet down into the ground to get to oil, crude oil, and then they'd set one of these pumps on top of it, and it would just sit there and articulate like this, and it would pump oil up and then bring it over into these tanks. And from the tanks, then they go into a semi, and then the semi hauls them off to a big okay. refinery or whatever. Good additional farm income. Yeah, but the uh, I used some just, I think I used graphite to dirty up just around where the pump head is, because that's something that you typically see is real dirty right around it and whatnot. Um, as we move on, the reason they would have a fence around the wheat field is because in the winter time they graze their cattle on the wheat field. Uh, that way they don't have to feed as hard in the winter time. Okay, so it's kind of more of a T post. Yeah, that would yeah. be a barbed wire and a T post. So that doesn't really hurt your yield too bad by letting them graze on it. No, it doesn't really hurt the yield, and they wouldn't be. They wouldn't harvest this with a combine. They would be baling it up. Okay. So what they do is they run their cattle on it in the winter time, and then about oh, I'd say April time, they take the cattle off, and then it it would grain out. That's what they call heading out. That's when the grain gets put on. Sure. And so the grain is on there when they cut it, but then we want to cut it in between where it doesn't have any grain on it and where it beards out. So when it beards out, it gets all the little uh, pieces of just prickly stuff on there. So it gets a little good way to get your cow sick because they can get in the inside of their jaw and get limp jaw and whatever. And so they would bail this and it'd only be about, oh, maybe a foot, 16 inches tall since they grazed it so long yep. when they mow it down. And they mow it down with the John Deere Moco, break it up. So they would have just bailed all this, and I can see it kind of has that yellow and green look to it. Right, and, uh, where the green would be is where it would. It hasn't turned completely over I yet. I like how you also have the drill details of where the right. rows of grain were on yeah, seven inch spacing. I took the Dan Myers technique and did that into it. Looks good. So what uh, model 8450, 8650 here? 8650, yes sir. Very nice, John Deere disc. Yeah. So are they, um, they're gonna disc this up and then... They disc this up and then Does they, it go right back to wheat for the next year? Nope, they double crop soybean into it. Okay. So out there we're able to use a drill to put our soybean in and then we would have a custom harvesting crew come in and cut our soybean. Okay. The farm would also have probably two or three 50 or 100 acres patches of alfalfa that they would also bail up just right. enough for the cattle. So then after the soybeans come off, right back to wheat? Right same back thing. to wheat. Okay. Get, disc it back in, right back to wheat. Well, that's a good looking tractor and disc and really enjoyed seeing the display. And congratulations on that gold trophy. I guess we should ask, um, what is your age? Because you're... 15. So you're 15. Yes. That's the first year you can compete in the adult division. In the adult division, and yes, sir. You yeah. could be competing against a hundred-year-old, right. so that's yeah. a pretty neat feat to yeah. to yes, win uh, the first year in in the senior division. Right, it's an honor almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, and we look forward to seeing what you build next. Yep. Thank you for checking out Toy Tractor Times YouTube and Tyson's display. We'll have a lot of footage from this year's National Farm Toy Show, and you can always join in the discussion on customs displays and farm toys on ToyTractorTimes.com. Toy Talk, thank you for watching.